Hey folks, I'm gonna try and do a vlog style update this week because I have these cool chat books that I wanna share. I just have, you know, just a couple of them, just a couple of little chat books. Um, so we think we can get through that in a week, I don't know. <laughs> these are chat books from a publisher called Strangers Press. It is a UK based publisher and they focus on publishing literary translations and international writing. And they do these series of chapbooks, whoa. <laughs> and there's, so far each, each series is eight different chapbooks and they're all stories or um, maybe a few essays that are all published within the series. It's um, translations from one particular language, but by different authors and different translators. And so there's, like I said, there's three series so far. There's Japanese into English, uh, Dutch into English, and Korean into English. And Strangers Press's mission is to promote translation of literary works as a form of cultural exchange, as a way for different cultures to get to know each other. And so it's really cool that they they dive into one particular language at a time and really curate this nice selection of different authors so that you can buy one set and get a whole range of different voices and stories and and gorgeous covers <laughs> gorgeous colorful covers as well so i bought all three sets and i thought i would do a bit of a reading vlog this week uh, but I, I don't think that I can get through all of these chapbooks in one week. And I didn't want to focus on just one language at a time. I wanted to mix it up, but also I didn't want to be the one hand picking, which I was going to read. I wanted it to be a little bit kind of random and maybe a little bit organic. So I think I'm actually going to order them in rainbow colored, <laughs> which is going to be interesting since a lot of them are, are, are multicolored covers. So I'm not really exactly sure how I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm also not going to go through here and go through all the titles and authors right in this moment because there are um, 24 of these. So we're going to give it a try and we'll see how well it goes. And I'll update you as I, as I read each of these beautiful, I mean, they're really, really colorful. Let me see if I can pull up here find a good one so this is a good one just really great covers and just a lot of fun i think i'm a little sideways my son knocked over our tripod and it is cracked and leaning oh <laughs> and i think it's this is interesting <laughs> we'll see okay let's see i'm gonna show you each set here i think this is I think I have them in, in set order. Yes, okay, so I believe their first series was the uh, Japanese, uh, translation of the Japanese literature, and it's called the Kashiki uh, series. And it looks like they usually collaborate with a, like a university, university or a foundation or some sort of literary organization in the country um, that they're working with. And Keshiki, the name of this, the series, the Japanese series, means landscape or view or like vista. Uh, so that's the Japanese series. The Dutch series, you can see here, uh, is called Verzet. I don't know what that means, but the covers are pretty, pretty excellent. <laughs> And I love how, you know, the obviously the color palette changes with each series. So this is obviously a little more muted here with our, our Dutch friends. And then the Korean series, nice, beautiful, bright covers, is called Yoyu. So those are the three, see, I'm not going to pick them up again. I was going to gather them all up again, but... Um, here you go, here's a subset. <laughs> Those are the three three beautiful series and I can't wait to read them. So also this weekend, I think we're gonna um, go to the beach. So maybe I'll get some footage of that, of our great beach that we can walk to here on Lake Michigan. And I am working on a quilt, so I'm gonna take a little time and just put together, I need, I finished the front of the quilt, I just need to put the backing together. So I'm gonna do that this weekend, it'll be quick. I might show that here also. And we get, this coming week, we get our first 
CSA, uh, Community Supported Agriculture Veggie Vegetable Box from the farm that we um, buy from every year. So this is the third year that we are doing this. So we get our first box of the season next week and I might actually do a little un unboxing of, of vegetables there with our nice spring, late spring veggie haul uh, so you all can see uh, all the great, the great goodies that we get from Nichols Farm. All right, so that's that. Let's put these in rainbow order. <laughs> oh God, I'm leaning so bad. <laughs> rainbow order, here we come. I've re-caught a cold that I already had a week ago. I gave it to my husband, he gave it to my son, and they gave it back to me. I don't know if this is possible, but it's happening. <laughs> so I just got home and um, I took a shower and I crawled into bed and started to read the first story for this vlog and it starts out with a piece of a human brain so we're starting out well we're starting out strong I'm not sure how much I can read <laughs> of this right now while I'm feeling so unwell but we're gonna keep carrying on Hey, I'm on my back porch and I finished the tourist butcher last night and it was pretty gruesome. <laughs> I think you're going to have to think about it a little bit more. Um, but overall, it was interesting. Um, the first story, as I mentioned, included a piece of a human brain, which was... Uh, interesting. I actually work in a kind of a medical research setting and I have been to a lab where they um, have actually pieces of, of human brains and so I've seen little laser thin slices. Um, they're studying uh, things like dementia and Alzheimer's and it was really cool. Um, that's not, it has nothing to do with the story. Well, a little bit actually. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting. Um, the tourist butcher was um, about exactly that, or a butcher of tourists. I'm not sure what I expected. Uh, so it was, it was pretty gruesome. Um, I won't say any more, say more, because it'll kind of ruin it. But, um, but it was, it was pretty predictable overall. But overall, I enjoyed. I enjoy is the wrong word. I'm glad I read it. Um, and now I am reading the. Uh, in defense of communism resist it's actually really really good so it's a gorgeous day here so I'm about to go for a little walk and I'll talk to you later hey there it's a little sunny out here so I apologize for that but it's hopefully less windy than it was yesterday it was so loud and windy when I came out here um, it's Sunday morning and I am here my husband just ran off to urgent care because he's feeling so unwell um, so he's, we'll see what happens there. I'm about to go in and make breakfast and my son's watching a little cartoon, little morning cartoons. Um, but I just finished this and I figured I would, um, come in and give you an update. So it was really good. I, I, I am not an expert on any, <laughs> any of the subjects covered in this essay. It's an overview, basically, more or less, of how capitalism exploits us and we basically thank it for doing so. Um, and how democracy, the, you know, the idea of democracy became conflated with 
capitalism and you know it has a little bit of historical snippets like how you know food production and food was one of the first commodities so basically people had to buy into capitalism um, or else you would starve then you know towards the end oh it's getting windy so it might be a little loud um, towards the end the author goes into a bit more about communism and how you know it's no wonder we have such a visceral reaction to the word communism when all of our examples really weren't communism they were dictatorships and, and dictators who committed atrocities it's a call for the collective good definitely think I'm gonna have to read it again to absorb more of the ideas anyway so far so good <laughs>
Hey folks, what a difference a day makes. I'm in a sweater now because it's kind of chilly out though the sun's come out and it's warmed up now. I am so excited. I've been waiting for this moment. Oh, I gotta reach. I've been waiting for this moment the whole vlog. I have read a chat book that was absolutely amazing. Um, it was the first one that I was um, really deeply fell in love with um, and actually the the last two I read were, were really good and both were from the Korean collection of chapbooks. So the first one is called Five Preludes and a Fugue and it is a, it's actually letters between two women, um, an older woman and a younger woman. The younger woman's in her 30s and she's about to get married and she's writing to the older woman and after 15 years has finally gotten the nerve to ask the older woman um, the details about the day her mother died. Um, this older woman was the only witness to the younger woman's mother's death. And so finally, 15 years later, this woman um, has, has, has gotten the nerve to ask, uh, ask about what happened that day. The format is so beautifully done. I love a letter format for um, a story or a novel. And this one is done so smoothly. You get a real sense of the place and of the characters and that's not easy to pull off. And so I just, I really loved it. Um, and then the second one that I read also from the Korean collection of chapbooks um, is called Kong's Garden. And this is the story, here we go. This is the story of a, a young woman who works in a bookshop. It's kind of a, it's kind of like located in a basement and it's not, they don't really treat their employees very well. and. This, the narrator is kind of going from job to job and and finds herself working at this bookstore and there's some like cats involved. In fact, Kong is a cat that lives, sorry, my kid is in the tub over there. <laughs> um, anyway, in the background. Um, and yeah, and then there's like a missing girl that is kind of thread that's going on too. And it's just very, um, atmospheric and tense and sad and really good. So two great chat books and on to the next one. I, well, I just finished one and I finished one last night and we had t-ball today So just got back from that which you might be able to tell so I finished friendship for grown-ups and this is from the Japanese collection and this is So it starts out with this really cool story I guess or vignette or I'm not really sure what to call it it's like kind of flash fiction that starts basically with the beginning of it's called genealogy and it starts with creatures crawling out of of the ocean and ends up um, you know at the end a human character I loved it it was amazing it was basically it was like it was the story of evolution, more or less. I mean, that's basically what it was. I'm not gonna say much more than that, but it was brilliant and I just loved it. Um, and the second two stories, one of them was about a relationship that had ended and the two, um, the kind of the boyfriend and the girlfriend end up hanging out together one last time to go look at the place where their old apartment was. And the last one was about uh, a writer who was trying to kind of 
start a new relationship with someone and it's not really work going so well and I didn't love those as much as the first story which was just bizarre and out there and wonderful uh, and the second two were great if they were good reads but they weren't quite the same on the same level as the first one but overall this was really great the last one I finished however <laughs> something has to happen was possibly my favorite of all the chat books that I've read so far it's starts out with a husband and a wife and their son has committed suicide. Basically they're trying to figure out how to go on from there and it's really beautiful. And then the second story is about a woman who is kind of trying to find therapy that a therapy, a version of therapy that works for her and she ends up in this uh, lum therapy lumberjack camp. <laughs> I don't know, um, but it's really great. And then the last story returns back to that same couple uh, that the first story focused on uh, dealing with the loss of their son. And the first story is from the perspective of the wife, and the last story is from the perspective of uh, from the perspective of the husband. And they're really beautiful. And so I really loved these. So I think I'm gonna wrap this up here because I'm not sure how many more of these chat books I'm gonna be able to read this weekend. So maybe I'll have to do a little bit of an update video at some point uh, in the near future as I continue to read these chapbooks from Strangers Press. But just to summarize here, we had The Tourist Butcher by Jamal Bariyashi, translated by Scott Emblen Jarrett. And that one was the one about two stories about a piece of a human brain and about a butcher of tourists. And that was from the Dutch collection. We have In, In Defense of Communism, Resist by Gustav Peck, translated by Brendan Monaghan. And this was more of an essay form and exactly what it says in defense of communism from, again, the Dutch collection. The Transparent Labyrinth by Keiichi Chiro Hirano, translated by Kiram Yasser. And this was yet again about tourists who are kidnapped in Budapest, Japanese tourists kidnapped in Budapest, and um, terrible things are done to them, and the main character is trying to move on with his life. And yeah, interesting. We have Five Preludes and a Fugue by Chian Hiran, translated by Emily Ye Wan. And this one was beautiful exchange of letters between two women about one of the, um, the mother of one of the women who had died 15 years earlier. We have Kong's Garden by Huang Cheng Un. And this is about a young woman who works in a bookstore and has a series of, of job, kind of casual jobs and um, also about a disappearance of a young girl and how that intersects with the narrator's life and yeah, it's very good oh, this is from this is from the Korean collection sorry I don't know if I mentioned this is from the Korean collection this is from the Korean collection we have friendship for grown-ups by now Kola Yamazaki translated by Polly Barton from the Japanese collection and again this is a uh, this is hard to describe. <laughs> this is three stories and yeah, it's about life. I would just say it's about life. Um, my son is yelling for me. And then we have Something Has to Happen by Marci Wortel, translated by Joseph Vandervoort. And this is, um, is three stories and it's about a mother and a father who've lost their son and about a woman who is trying to find the right kind of therapy for her. Um, and so of the group, I would say my favorites, my probably my favorite piece of writing was the first story in, in Friendship for Grown Ups called Genealogy. Um, and you know, I liked the other two, but the first one was just really remarkable and unusual. Um, and then after that, I would say Something Has to Happen um, was, was amazing. <laughs> um, and so I really love that one. And then following that, I would say Five Preludes and a Fugue 
was very uh, moving and I love the structure. It was just, you know, it's nice and refreshing to have a, a structure structured around letters between two women. And then also Kong's garden was probably like the most atmospheric of the bunch. It was very, it was really dark and um, I don't know, it, it was really great. Uh, so seven chat books out of 24. I didn't think I would get through them all. I thought maybe I would get through a little more than that, but, uh, but I also finished one book and which I showed earlier, I'll talk about it in a different place. I won't even bring it up, um, but finished one book and started another book. So it was a great reading week and got a lot of other things done too. It was a busy, busy week. Um, but I can't wait to come back and talk more. If you've read these um, chat books from Strangers Press, please, please tell me about what, what you thought of them. And, and, you know, if you've read some of the ones that I haven't uh, gotten to yet, I would love to hear uh, which ones I should tackle next. The next, next color, I think I'm finally into the oranges. I made it through, I made it through red. <laughs> Okay, I made it through red. I think I've made it to orange. So I'm gonna go pick up an orange chat book. Okay, so I've changed out of t-ball gear and I've come outside kind of thinking through my final thoughts about my experiment this week with Strangers Press. So I thought, you know, it's a little outside of the kind of books and literature that I usually buy. I don't have a lot of experience with chat books. And so that was really great to dive into and I really enjoyed even even the even the chat books that weren't necessarily up my alley exactly I really enjoyed the experience of reading them even just the physicality of them I loved how they felt in my hands and how they were um, you know the covers felt and um, just like a, a nice thin little beautiful piece of literature was great to to dive into and in terms of you know the the mission of strangers press which is cultural exchange through translated literature i thought that definitely came across especially with the korean collection and the japanese collection I felt like the dutch collection that i've read so far it was a little bit harder to get a sense of like the fact that, okay, this is in the Netherlands, this takes place in the Netherlands, I don't know. Um, I am, I am Dutch, so I, I mean, part, you know, I have Dutch heritage, I guess. And so I was really excited. I think that's actually what drew me to Strangers Press in the first place. I was interested in getting into some Dutch writing and learning more about Dutch writers. But really in the end, I think it was the, the Korean chat books that I've read so far that drew me in the most like as a whole when I think about the them together um, even though my my favorite chat book of all of them was was one of the Dutch chat books so um, and then my other favorite well I don't know I love them all I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore <laughs> um, so I it was really it was a great chance to dive into a different culture you know as all translated literature is you know I hope that I hope that Strangers Press is going to come out with another set soon I definitely will be picking it up um, because I just I lo so love the idea of getting a collection of writers that are all writing in the same language but are writing different stories or essays or whatever they are and you can buy them all in one go and you get this nice curated selection. I think that is really cool and really valuable. It inter introduces you to writers you might not have otherwise come across or maybe writers that you do know and love and you can get um, you can get just this, this little piece of their writing in this chapbook that, that you might not be able to pick up in any other books that are out there by those writers. So uh, this was a great experiment and I really can't wait to read the rest of the chat books and keep you posted on how they go. And now I think I'm going to go read some more and I hope you do too. Um, have a great day. Bye.